A little while ago, I made a video showing a Dell Optiplex 755 Core 2 Duo booting into Windows uh, 11. And I've had several people ask about a video showing the performance, how it's how it operates, all that kind of stuff. So I thought I would kind of do that here. Initially, what this is, this is from cold boot up to the lock screen. And as you can see, it takes almost 30 seconds. I mean, just shy of 30 seconds to get to there. And then from the lock screen, once we uh, hit enter, and put in our pin and then start to boot up, then that's what this is here. Now this does, it feels like it takes a really long time. Truth is, it, it's not bad. Uh, it, it's not great, I would say, but then again, you're dealing with a Core 2 Duo, uh, three gigahertz, you know, way older machine. But as you can see, once we get to the actual full desktop, almost 30 seconds, a, a little over 25 seconds there, um, and part of that was just waiting for the icons at the bottom to show up. As you can see here, we've got the new start menu. That pops up there and uh, actually seemed to be okay. That actually gets populated more and more as you do things uh, on the system. Then we pull up the file explorer here, and as you can see, uh, just kind of walking through some of the folders. It's nothing, uh, there's really no lag. I mean, it's actually performing quite well, so I thought we would jump into Office 365 and attempt to launch uh, Word 365. And this actually takes a little bit of time. I think it's a combination of things. I think one of the things that happens is it's because it hadn't been launched before, we kind of have these little screens that pop up. Uh, but even here, uh, when I tell it that I want to make a new Word document, uh, you can see that the uh, mouse cursor gets the little spl blue spinning uh, wheel, for lack of a better description, every now and then as if it's doing something. But it, I don't know, it just it never really seemed to open up the Word application uh, as we were kind of sitting here. So I, I went ahead and uh, told it to you know, do it again. Let's just see if we can get this thing to launch. So uh, I clicked on Word from here this time and chose a new document. Uh, again, the initial application seems to load in halfway decently, but I've got to wait for the ribbon to show up. And that takes a little bit of time, uh, about a minute and 10 seconds there uh, for Word to fire up. So uh, I went in, typed a little bit on here uh, just to play around with the different settings. Not, not really settings, but just to get a feel for what the keyboard input feels like working in Office 365 on this Core 2 Duo. And I will tell you, it's it's just as basically just as responsive as, as using, say, Google Docs or, or anything else um, with any machine connected to the Internet. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of lag depending on what's going on with your internet connection. But for the most part, this actually worked out pretty nicely. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I've never used Office 365 before. So uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks like I'm using Word, feels like I'm using Word. And again, the, the typing that I'm doing is flowing pretty well. Uh, it's working out relatively nicely for what we're doing here. Uh, again... Um, you know, Core 2 Duo, so it, it, it's behaving okay. I decided to insert an image, so uh, using the built-in image search, um, tech isn't getting me anywhere. Okay, so technology, all right, so uh, just kind of scrolling down through here, letting it load in the thumbnails. I, I want to get a feel for how that operates. Um, unfortunately, here I picked one that I'm supposed to pay for. I wasn't even paying attention. I didn't realize that some were free. So let's we'll go back and, and find a, a free technology image. There we go. We'll insert this one. And here things are a little, you know, I mean, they're not bad. Uh, as you can see, I'm resizing stuff here. Um, there's a little bit of a lag. It, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, but when you're using it anecdotally, it feels a little laggy. Um, putting in the image and, and trying to manipulate it around. Uh, as you can see here, I'm attempting to close the document and it's not closing. 
I don't know if that's a bug in Office 365 or what that is, but anyhow, ultimately, just decide to close that and move on. Now, we're going to launch Edge, and I, I actually considered putting in a timer for Edge, but the truth is, Edge came up pretty quickly. I mean, I didn't see a reason to even bother putting in a timer because I... It, as far as I can tell, it did not load any slower than you would normally have a web browser load up on any desktop computer. So that actually worked out okay. And then as you can see here, jump out to YouTube and just kind of letting the thumbnails uh, come up and scrolling through, letting the thumbnails update. Here definitely uh, is, is a little laggy. Again, though, in the scheme of things, not bad. Uh, then we have whatever this message center thing is that Windows 11 has. Uh, that populated pretty quickly. It scrolls up and down just fine. Not really a problem there. Um, I, I, the double desktop thing, I mean, that works. I didn't actually fire up multiple desktops. You could play around with that if you wanted to, but I didn't see a need to. Uh, jump into device manager. Now, Device Manager does take a little bit of time to populate, but again, you see there, in the scheme of things, it really wasn't worth putting a timer on. That's probably not much different than any new computer that's never run Device Manager before. That seemed to go pretty well. Um, so then uh, we've got uh, different options here. I want to go in and check the properties. Um, I'm not familiar with this particular interface, so as I'm scrolling through some of the system settings, what I'm what I'm looking for is the uh, uh, just just the overall. There we go. Just the about right that tells me uh, here's the processor, um, you know, all that other information that's uh, going on in there. Also, just wanted to pull up real quick and show you the OS build. This is not the build that I used for the quick little video. As a matter of fact, this build, my understanding is, this is the preview build, but it's got the Windows 10 uh, injection so that uh, this particular flavor, you don't have to have TPM. Um, and as, as a matter of fact, I'm going to pull that up here. Uh, if we uh, click on search, and if you search for tpm.msc, uh, that'll bring up the TPM manager. And uh, as you can see here, once this fires up, it's telling me the uh, TPM can't be found. So I am running Windows 11 without TPM on an old school Core 2 Duo machine. And I mean, it, it's working fine. I, I have a feeling that uh, Microsoft is probably going to find a way to shut down that Windows 10 injection so that you have to have the TPM. Or then again, perhaps they'll kind of back off of that. You never know. In any case, I just wanted to get in here, show what this system uh, behaves like. Frankly, I think it runs pretty smooth. I mean, it, to me, it doesn't run any worse than a modern-day low-end laptop so you know if you've got some old desktops floating around windows 11 might be worth checking out especially if you can get uh, around the whole tpm thing if your machine does not have uh, tpm either installed or if it's not uh, enabled so anyhow there you go wanted to show that thank you so much we'll see you next time